Good morning, everyone. This is Jeff from the Cyber Pro Podcast, back today with another episode. Today, my guest is Matt Salisbury. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He is the CEO of a company called Honey Badger, and he's going to tell us a little bit about geo authentication and why that is important to us now and in the future. So, with that, Matt, good evening in London. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. Good evening, Jeff, or good good afternoon, depending on I think where you are. Um, Thanks for having me. Pleasure to to be on your your show. Um, So my name is Matthew Salisbury. Most people call me Matt, Um, but I'm the the founder and CEO of Honey Badger. Uh, We're a fraud prevention company that focuses on trying to prevent fraud. But what we're best known for is detecting. Uh, fraudsters that call call centers and pretend to be somebody else and then also for authenticating people as well which we'll explore in a little bit more detail later fantastic um i read on your linkedin profile that this is your i believe your second startup the first one you had a couple years ago got acquired by a large company congratulations um as the ceo of a startup uh, in the cybersecurity space being a cyber professional you know, tell us about the most fascinating or interesting or challenging aspect of what it's like to be in your seat every day. Oh, well, it's, that's a that's a big question with a, a long answer, um, but I'll try and keep it brief. I think um, the, the most challenging thing really early on is um, how, how you can get people to listen to you because there's so many technologies out there and especially in the cyber security space um and the, the really the big challenge is that you have all these ideas and you want to share them with people um and people just are too busy to listen right so um part of the challenge with any business i think and and, and tech and, and SaaS businesses in particular is how do you differentiate yourself? How do you build your network and connections? And how do you um, partner with organizations to um, build solutions that gives them value quickly? Um, and so I think I spend a lot of my time, especially as I, I build businesses in, in how I can optimize that. Um, and that that's probably the biggest challenge that, that I think you know a lot of people like myself have. Yeah, that's a really compelling uh, statement of of too much noise out there, really. there's, uh, And and I'm going to get back to that question in a bit about how to do the channel partnerships and partnering. As a small company, a lot of times we find value in not trying to jump up and down and scream ourselves, but partner with the right people who can jump up and down and scream and and we get a piece of that pie. So maybe we'll get back to that one in a second. Uh, Question number three. We hear from industry leaders that there are various aspects of cybersecurity which have been around for a long time, and really no one has cracked the nut. And one of the big ones is what we're going to talk about with authentication and specifically how to get someone to verify or validate who they are by getting beyond those standard questions. So let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, it's. It's such a, a difficult area, and it's as you say, been around for a long time. People have been trying to solve this this challenge of, of verifying is somebody who they say they are um, for for a long time. And the the best way to do it when you can is multi factor or two factor authentication. That's usually the you know, the way the industry is going, passwordless and and testing not based upon what somebody knows, but what they have right and um, biometrics, etc. But the challenge becomes, well, what happens if a person, for example, loses their device that they're using for two-factor? Or what if it's a, a new application for a credit card and they're not actually on the system or registered, so you're trying to check, you know, do they actually live at the address they, they, they say they do? Um, and so what you get in that situation is, is very, very challenging, you know, circumstances. Uh, and so we, we, we kind of thought deeply about this um, from our perspective at Honey Badger, and we kind of thought, well, the, the way people do it right now is is knowledge based. So usually your mother's maiden name, um, name of first pet, where you went to school, all of these types of questions that people can find quite easily. That's you know one one challenge with them. The other challenge is that people often forget what they answered. Um, mm. It could be the way they spell it or how they say it, etc. So what we did is we said, well, okay, well, what's something that you should know but nobody else 
would. Um, and so we came up with this concept of what we call geo-authentication. And the idea is that you can provide an address. It could be where you live or somewhere you grew up or you went to school, whatever it may be. Um, and we'll find images um, from, from locations nearby to that address. Uh, and we'll say to you, well, which are the ones that do you recognize? You know, if you really live there and you know this area, well, you tell us, is this, this chicken shop in your area or is it from somewhere else? Um, and we found it was a really awesome way because people, you know, that, that natural ability to recognize images, people could do that, right? And very easily, very quickly, and it wasn't strenuous on them. Um, and then the other part of it is that people don't forget because if, when you grow up somewhere or if you know somewhere well, your, your brain just has this ability to recognize it at any place, any time. And so that's that's what we brought to the table in, in the sense of how we can authenticate people under those very challenging conditions. That's very interesting. I have two follow-up questions on that one. The first one is, I assume that there's some sort of a timeout based on those questions that they have to answer within a certain amount of time so they can't go Google map it themselves. And then two, how do you handle the timeline issue, right? Because if you're talking about fried chicken, how do we know that that fried chicken shop is still there when the person lived there 10 years ago? How do you handle that? Yeah, a couple of a couple of things we do. So absolutely, we do have a, a timeout. So we will we'll track um, how long it takes, and it shouldn't take you too long to answer these questions. If you do things like navigate away from a device or a screen, we can see that. Um, and we do something very clever with our uh, AI machine learning. We'll we'll grab images that people wouldn't find easily. For example, off Google Street View with different perspectives, and it's not your standard, you know, Google image search. It's actually taking it from Street View, for example, which is which can be difficult to look up unless you're going to walk around the entire town and try and memorize, you know, everything. So that's that's one thing we do. And then the other part, um, what we've what we found is that if a, a location changes, let's say it's a, a, a shop or a, like you say a chicken shop or a supermarket, and it's changed to to be something else, often you'll still recognize the scene. So the shop itself has changed, but what we'll do is we'll stitch images together and create like a, a panoramic view so you can look around. And though, so you might not recognize that exact shop, but you'll go, wait a minute, I recognize this scene, this layout, this street, um, because there'll be other things. And that's just the, the power of your, your brain to be able to, to do that. So um, that's kind of how we, we, we tackle it in that regard. For those of our wise viewers who have noticed that we, Matt and I, have mentioned chicken three times in the last five minutes, it's because we are the CEO and president of Chickens Anonymous. We'll get into that on a bonus question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? That, that has been very interesting. And there are a couple of bonus questions. But let's talk about the final question, which is kind of related to what we're, we're talking about today. It's about the, the passage of time and how things change, but how things don't. So on that, do you have a piece of retro technology that you enjoy, that makes you smile, and really has some powerful meaning to you that said, when you think of it, really kind of got you down the path of where you are today? Well, I, you know, I think one of the, as you can tell, I, I like imagery, right? I'm a very visual person. And one of the things that I've, I'd say, reconnected or, or fallen back in love with is, you know, the, the Polaroid cameras? and the, the photo booths. Now, I was never a fan of them when they were first released. I mean, it was just a big big camera that's chunky, right? And wasn't particularly fun to carry around. But what I've found in, in recent years is that I've been to a lot of weddings and people have them on the tables, they have the booths and you know, you all kind of pile in and we usually put some fancy dress you know, stuff on and, and take pictures. And so I, I've really started to enjoy them because there's something nice about having an instant picture you know from a polaroid that's not perfect in by any means but it's like a, a memory that's captured and everyone can kind of enjoy it there and then um so i've really kind of fallen in love with that um and yeah that's maybe that's influenced um the the, the way we've you know built honey badger but i don't know if or, or it's just something that i i enjoy i've fallen back in love with so yeah that's that's my kind of retro kind of technology that i like yeah that's a that's a a deep answer you know we live in a society that is very photoshopped and ai'd and everything is improved and perfect and it's nice to have those moments and times those captures that are not they really do make a difference in our lives yeah. matt thank you very much for your time we appreciate it um for those of you who don't know we post two to three episodes a week 
uh, here at the Cyber Pro Podcast with amazing, fascinating, and compelling guests like Matt. Uh, my last question to you is, if somebody wants to learn more about you or more about your services at Honey Badger, what's the best way to get in contact with you? Um, the easiest way is our website, honeybadgerhq.com. But the best way is to drop me a message and I can speak to you all day long because I'm passionate about this stuff. So if anybody wants to, to reach out to me on LinkedIn, they can feel free to look me up. Um, I'll always reply. Um, or usually always reply unless you're trying to sell me something that I don't need. Um, and I'm happy to just get on a call and chat because one of the things I love to do is learn from potential customers or people with challenges and just see how we, how we can adapt our roadmap to possibly help in future. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for that. And for those of you who are questioning, if you want to sell him some fried chicken, he's willing to listen to you. With oh, that, absolutely. <laughs> with that, Matt, thank you again for your time. Be well. Thank you, Jeff. You made it to the end. Thanks for watching the Cyber Pro Podcast today. You can find more content here and here and there.